Why are programmers so slow? How, who here has worked on a greenfield project? A project where there's no code. Ah, a bunch of you. How fast can you go those first few days where there's no code? And someone comes to you and says, can you get a feature done? And you think, yes! You start writing code. Code pours out of every orifice of your body. And you get that feature working. And everybody goes, whoa, you got that working fast. It only took you a few days. Yeah, we're programmers. Can you do it again? Yes! <laughs> Come back to that team a year later. Can you get a feature working for us? <sighs> Ooh, tricky. It's probably going to take us six months. He used to be able to do that in a couple of days. Yeah, but you don't know. How messy this system has become. Why, if we touch even one line of code, all hell could break loose. Why'd that happen? Now, here's the thing that happens to software teams, right? They start out fast. They start out with a beautiful design, and they start out lovely, and they're fast, and they write features, and everything's working great. But they make a mess because they want to go fast, they make a mess. And as they make a mess, as the mess builds, the team gets slower and slower and slower until they bottom out at 1% of their original productivity. Right? And, there's, and what are you going to do about this? Let's say you're a manager, right? And you've got this team, this team's been working on this software for two years now, and they can't get anything done. No feature can get done in less than you know, six months, and even then it's going to be late and it won't work. What are you, and you know, <laughs> this is the real world for managers. What are you going to do as a manager? You've made promises to people. You've, had, you've set plans out there. There's people expecting features, and the teams cannot deliver those features. What are you going to do as a manager? What would your option be? You've got to go fast somehow. Add more people. Right? That's what you do. You have to double the staff. Everyone knows you'll go twice as fast if you double it. And you're laughing. Why are you laughing? Because you know this is nonsense. You can't go faster by doubling the staff. Adding more people does not make you go faster. What does it do? The moment you decide to add new people to a team, what happens to that team? It slows down. Why? Because the new people suck the life out of the old people. <laughs> For months. Now, you're kind of hoping that those new people will get smart after a while and, and then productivity will rise. But there's another effect that kicks in. Who's training the new people? The people who made the mess in the first place. And in fact, it's not the old people training the new people. It is the old code that trains the new people. The new people are thrown into the fire. They've got to make some sense out of this system. They read the old code. They say to themselves, oh, I see how things are done around here. They emulate it, of course, and just continue to make the problem worse. And the code gets messier and messier, no matter how many people you add to the team. And nothing you do can make that productivity rise. That's why programmers are slow. They're slow because they make a mess. If they didn't make a mess, they'd be fast. If you could keep the code clean, it wouldn't be a mess. You could add new features. They would get added in a reasonable amount of time as long as you could continue to keep the code orderly and clean. We're going to talk about a number of strategies for doing that, but I wanted to impress that point on you pretty thoroughly. We go slow because we make messes. Why do we make the mess? What drives us to make the mess in the first place? The desire to go fast. We make the mess because we think, oh, I got to get done quickly. They're expecting me to get a lot of stuff done. I got I to gotta just get it done. Oh, it worked. How many of you have done this? It's hard to get code to work. You struggle to make code work. 
So you're working on the code and you're working on the code and you're trying to get it to work. It's not working. And you're sitting in the debugger and you're single stepping through it and you're trying to make it work. And, and then all of a sudden it works. You say, okay, don't anybody breathe. <laughs> Move carefully and I'll check it in. Oh, God, thank you. That's the wrong thing to do. The fact that you got it working is only half the job. Once the code works, that's when you have to clean it. No one writes clean code first. Nobody does. Because it's just too hard to get code to work. So once the code works, it will be a mess. Human beings do not think in nice straight lines. They don't think in if statements and while loops. They cannot foresee the entire algorithm. So we piece the thing together and we cobble it together with wire and scotch tape and then it suddenly works and we're not quite sure why. And that's the moment when you say, all right, now I need to clean it. How much time do you invest in cleaning it? Roughly the same amount of time it took you to write it. And that's the problem. Nobody wants to put that effort in because they think they're done when it works. You're not done when it works. You're done when it's right. And if you adopted that attitude, well, then the code would stay clean and you would never go through the slowdown. More to say about this later.